So welcome to Buddy's Designs. This is a live show with live peoples. It's recorded for Ustream.tv and also for YouTube for people to watch at their leisure. I'm working in Have a, a Serene and Magical Christmas. And I started this, now my lighting's a little bit off, in the graphite tint, but I've used the graphite tint as a pencil. So I'm blending just a couple of couple of um, colours together. So I'll zoom in and see if the lighting gets a bit better. So the 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 hollow leaves I've been using a meadow number 10, green grey number 9 and ivy number 11. And I like the graphite tint. There is only 11 and of course I'm obsessed by having the 72 sets of Derwent pencils but I do like the fact that these are a little bit cheaper and there's only 24 and you don't have many yellows and reds there's only two reds but these are grungy so when you're making grungy colors it's difficult to have light colors so if i zoom in if i can remember how to zoom in so we do have our bunnies this is our first week and our first live show in the new art studio which is also a bunny <laughs> it's also a bunny run as well so it truly is bunny's design so i did work on the little bird um but i thought i'm just going to work on this bit here so i'm going to turn the lighting down a bit you may have to play um, You can see the, the colours of the graphite tint, so it's probably the best you're going to get. It's just a hint of colour. I just have to play a bit with the. I might just pan out a little bit. Oopsie, Bambi's having a moment. So we have. We have Bambi the mummy bunny running around, literally skating around the room like a racehorse. Um, and hopefully, let's have a look and see if we can find our mascot. And this is the boy that did the damage last week. <laughs> I woke him up and he wasn't a happy boy. So I hope him focus. So apologies for the arm, <laughs> but um, he's uh, he was a bit of a grumpy boy. So I was going to work on this leaf here and this area. Um, <clears throat> and I can't actually remember which one I did. I did a grungy one on the edge and then I kind of, I took it off with the eraser. So I'm using the Comb Automatic Long Point pencil sharpener and I'm also using my Derwent electric eraser and I just need those two things so I love the fact that you can do a really really nice page and and kind of really get into it as well uh, with 24 colors um, a, a, a graphite a, a electric eraser or an ordinary eraser if you've got poor, if you haven't got poorly hands and a, and a good a good pencil sharpener now I'm not using points I'm not using really fine points but if I was trying to get to certain areas I will so you probably see that these look quite blunt but there is no reason to sharpen them um, now these when I do sharpen them these colors that I'm collecting this this gorgeous color which is what the end here is pigment it will be going in my lovely little book which I have eventually found and this is a very old um, you can tell because it's faded. It's a very old-fashioned um, 70s, maybe, 80s. It's a photo album, so you used to get your photos and slide them in, and then it's a little tiny album. But I've cut the plastic. So one page, you had a photograph on each side. Um, so I've cut the plastic down the side and across the bottom. As neat as possible, but it wasn't that neat. Then I've used a cheapy postcard, thin card, to make a page. And then I've used my wet, extra wet strength sketchbook paper to make the squares. 
because I'm going to be making puddles of colour with my shavings and it's also going to replace the little bit of the graphite tint so it, when you're using these pencils like the ink tents it's a real good idea to have your scratch of colour because you can use them as a watercolour and the watercolour palette but you can also use them as a scaler so you get 10 shades out of each pencil and when you're just using the pencil with a wet brush you've only got one or two um, so I do like to use this because again we've only got the autumn brown as a red chestnuts are ready brown and then we've got the port number one which is um, literally a port colour so it's a deep a deep pinky red so anybody got any questions oh, spare me a second oh hi Kingo welcome to Bunny's Designs anybody else popping in I hope I'm in frame it just doesn't look like I'm in focus but then when I do that it is I think it's Unfortunately, my, my new studio, I haven't set the lights up yet. So it's, uh, and I'm on bare concrete, so, oops, there's a lot of running about. And they, they are the bunnies that you can hear. So, only two seconds. The bunnies are all being naughty because they know that it's the first time they've been on camera. <laughs> so, so we have all six bunnies. But normally what will happen or soon when we have the pens, they'll probably have half the room to run around. Uh, but because they haven't been neutered, and I can't find Bambi now. What's Bambi doing? Bambi! The mummy bunny is running around loose. <laughs> so I'm not sure if that's a good idea. But, so I'm just going to darken this a little bit more to give it a bit more colour. Um, and again, I did. I have forgotten how how I did this, but we're trying to create kind of a bit of a a bit of a shadow, a bit of a shadow because um, it wants to be kind of really grungy, and that will make the snow. Now, because we've got some lines drawn on here, I have to do what I did with this page on the snow scene. And, and I have to put a little bit of dark. And that got rid of the lines. So some of it was left pure white for the, the snow highlight. But I had a very pale grey, three greys. On here now this is the don't watercolor pencils but used dry um, and it's not quite finished I need to kind of darken these ladies these these squares the Christmas Carol singers and the front wants to be darkened as well but um, I like that technique so this lends itself quite well but I do want a bit of a highlight up here so I'm just going to turn a touch there So I have a bit of a contrast, so we know that there is going to be a little bit of a highlight there. And the same with this one. Although that one is behind, this one isn't. So this one will have the highlight. And just a touch on that bit there. This one goes over the top, so it needs to be a little bit paler, but I do want to kind of green it up a little bit. It's lost its green. It's got... There's a gorgeous... This is the the meadow one but the the grey green is kind of really grungy but it kind of loses a little bit so the other thing I want to try and do is to get rid of the black line don't like the black line so I'll show you how I'm going to do that in a minute and again here I need that darker Bambi's found my blanket underneath. So she's found me and she's sleeping on my feet. <laughs> so I 
Oh, she's trying to climb up my knee. <laughs> so we'll have another bramble calm in a, in a little while. So a little bit of a shadow on there. And again, I really would have liked rid of those lines. I don't like those lines. So I really need to work a colour into there so that I can really get rid of these. And then I have been using black. We have number 20 midnight black. And I've been kind of really trying to get rid of this, this black line. And then just gently blending the two together. Now I've also used dark indigo and I kind of like that now again I haven't got a point on this because there's no real reason to have that but I really want to get this black line but there comes a point with uh, there comes a time in in when because you've put three or four layers of these gorgeous creamy watercolor pencils they can't get any more and you just get a little bit of dust so you've got to think what to put there first so I think I would probably have put black first and got that dark straight in there rather than a oops Bambi's having a good run round sorry about the noise this is mummy bunny who's in the new studio so it's, it's really darkened it up, but I do want to get rid of these these lines. So there's a slate green, but I don't think I like slate green. And again, I'd forgotten about this. You can't always tell with these colours here. You can't always tell. Sorry, she's running about. So I have a look here. Now the steel blue is a very nice dark cold grey. The grey green, it, it's a greeny grey is that one. And then we have a mountain grey, which is almost a very dark blue. And there's the black. There's a cool grey. But I think the steel blue might just... And of course, any blue... Any blue you put with green is going to make it darker because obviously a darker blue... So we may lose again some of this this green that we had going, but I really want to get rid of that line if I can. So again, this is trial and error. It's only on thin paper, um, and probably. I may need to sharpen this because I do want a nice fine line. I don't think I want a, an ordinary line. So this uh, Combe Automatic Long Point, which is difficult to read. I can't remember how I did it now. Did I put something behind it? Black, so you could read it maybe. Um, you're supposed to take off the wood um, and it takes most of the wood off and leaves. Now I often don't take it right to the end but there is a stopper but I do knock off the, take the wood out and discard that. I have a little pot. So this is just purely for the wood shavings but in the bottom of here we have all that colour so what happens is you get this and then if you want a real sharp point you take it to the next level now most of the times I don't take it to the next level but because I do want a really nice highlight sorry low light a very very dark thin line I'm sharpening it um, so that's going to give me a really nice oops and you do have to be careful because your points will break. I 
and you have to learn not to press down which I've forgotten about and then you can have some really nice sharp and of course where we've got shadow in there we can get some nice some nice work in there and that has to be very dark anyway so we can really kind of grunge that up a bit and that will make the other leaf pop out so remember what we said about light a lighter light highlight is going to look a lot lighter if it's got a shadow behind it and a shadow is going to look a lot darker if it's got a highlight next to it um, and there is a there is a word for that, but um, I think it's like skira skira or something like that. But I call it Rembrandt light, lighting. And although it's quite dark and grungy, the highlights are very very bright because it's the light. It's all to do with the lighting and and how you change the, the the light and the perspective of the mood with the light um, so I thought I might go through that actually when I do my book painting because I have one that's very very dark so if we put a green over that black we end up with a dark green rather than a black black has anybody got any questions? Um, oh, I think I'm on New Year's Eve. I think I'm midnight London Greenwich Mean Time. Which is going to be interesting because quite a few people are going to be sleeping in the conservatory at that time. <laughs> or oh, my art studio. Come bunny run. So you can really build up that really, really grungy effect. And then what that will do is make that sun, that snow really pop out. Um, and this is quite dark as well. This is the background. So again, we want to kind of really grunge that up. And to just but I don't want it to be black black I just want it to be dark around the edges and that's what I did with the snow tried to get rid of that that black line and again you've got to remember not to press down because you'll snap your points just need um, the midnight the dark indigo to still keep a little bit of that light shining through but blend from black to pale without that stark line just blend it out so you've got a little bit of a little bit of light but we've almost got rid of that black and that's what you need to do all the way around is just Build up colour. If you want to get rid of the original lines on the drawing, and I need to get. quite dark in there so you can make that leaf pop out by making those leaves back quite dark so this leaf will pop out now
trying to build up a little bit of darkness so that that little leaf will pop up. And then there comes a point where even with the graffiti tint, because they're kind of nice and waxy, there comes a point where you can't really get any more. But that's going to be enough. I think that will be enough to make those pop out. So we have a bit of a... Now I use the Midnight. Or did I use... Let me have a look. I think I used um, the greys, but I, I used cool grey, I think. Steel blue. Steel blue was... It wasn't ocean blue, was it? No, steel blue. Steel blue is quite cold. Um, but there's a cool grey up there. So put a little bit of, and I need your point for this, a bit of, a bit of this creates a shadow of a snow. And then we want, uh, there's a cloud, um, there's a cloud silver grey. I thought it was a different grey, but and it must be cloud grey. And then I'm going to blend that. to kind of, actually I've done it the wrong way around. I want it the other way around. So if you haven't wet it, and we're not going to do with this, you can take most of it off. If you have a clean eraser. If you don't have a clean eraser, you can't do that. So I take that off and I put it in that one. So that's the clean end. And I don't waste them, I keep them. You can either cut them down when they're dirty, or if you're using a really grungy area, you might not want the perfect white highlight, use a grunged up one. But I want to get rid of this, so. Now, there is a bit of color on here because obviously I've smudged a bit. So to get that white highlight back, you need to take the <laughs> don't know what she's doing my So we'll try that again and I'll do it right this time. So we need steel blue just a little bit, a very fine line. That's your darkest shadow. And then draw it downwards. So it's not too stark. And then pale it out to nothing. And you, you should, if I hadn't have put that on the other side, And then and then what you can do is kind of really give that a ridge so you know that there is a little bit of a snow flurry there. Oh thank you, Kenny. So I think I'm I'm back sorry, back on uh, New Year's Eve. So I think I'm on um, London Greenwich Mean Time. It'd be about about midnight till two, I think. But again, it depends on if there's lots of people wanting to do it. I think we cut down to an hour, but I think I'm on for two, which I think is about seven p.m. I think it's seven p.m. Um, and the reason to do this is, although I've made a boo boo, in theory. The snow on the top is going to be so bright and snowy. It 
it's so different you can tell that there is a bit of contrast with the snow so you build up like a bit of a ridge oh thank you V, V's put the uh, it's uh, musical scrapper dot blogspot dot and I think you find everybody on there there's um, a list of everybody that's streaming on the streamathon which was um, my first year last year so thanks guys for uh, putting up with me for a year <laughs> So I'm open to suggestions for streamathon, um, and not to our silence, please. <laughs> I thought what I might do is work through the Joanna book, uh, not the Joanna book, the um, the book I've been colouring in and not activating with watercolour. So I was saving it if you were going away somewhere, or going on holiday, or going in an aeroplane, or going on the beach. You could still use all your gorgeous colours. Put the colour on like this, but don't activate it. I might just see if I can get away with the tiniest little bit of black but not everywhere and that's just showing that you know that is is a bit of a ridge of a snow snow drift but you do need to have the lightest highlight next to the darkest and of course I did it the wrong way around that way But if by using that slate um, cool grey, it's a little bit bluer. Oops. Steel blue was that little bit bluer. Uh, and it made the snow just that bit cooler. But I, I practiced that on a different page. So again, sometimes some pages. And I could actually let that go like that so it goes under there. So we can, we can make that go under there. And then we can have... We can have a nice shadow, and it's not black, it's not a black shadow. And we have a shadow on our berries, but it's like this shadow here. This is the bird's belly. The bird has, has a shadow, but it doesn't want to be black, it just wants to be a darker version. Um, I didn't manage to get rid of the the black around the bird. I didn't really want the black line around the bird. And so you can sometimes manage that by really getting that dark. And under here, we've got some really nice dark browns, but now I'm just introducing a bit of black. Just gently, because remember this, this paper, it's a bit thinner than normal. So you can't always get. And then drawing right up to this snowy bit here. So that snow has a, a shadow as well. And again, you've got to remember not to keep pressing down too hard because you'll break that really nice long point. But we have a bit of a hard... So that snow is thick snow, it's just not a thin line. Oh yes, Kingo. So I'll pan out very slowly. It looks a little bit blurred, did that? So, um, so you can see now we've got a bit of a highlight there. The robin is really popped up and we've got rid of the black line around the robin and we've got the snow so we've got rid of that a couple of lines that we had. So you can really get rid of your lines and here we've got rid of those lines as well. So they look almost real and then you know that this one is on top and that is underneath. And then we're going to put a bit of a shadow on these two as well. But not the dark shadow black, but the steel blue one, the one that we've used here. It's snow. It's a white shadow, but it's a snow shadow. So it's still snow, it's just in shadow. So we don't want black. 
black went with all this dark green here because this was darker than here but this is a snow shadow so it has to be lighter um, so I quite enjoyed that and again we've got that little tiny bit of a, a shadow on, the, on the, the snow and under here because the snow is going to be the brightest here where there's nothing but obviously here we've got quite a lot going on and just to make that pop again this now will go behind the bird and behind there we've got a couple of lines here do the same thing and it makes your snow not be just pure white snow except for where you want your highlights um, so I was going to pan on really quickly to do my and Bambi's here she's running around oh she's on my feet now so if I do this you can see that I'm on my desk so let's just have a look so over there we have drying out concrete because they finished it a couple of days ago and we have drying out plaster because he finished it last night in the afternoon uh, I've got my mum's old table that I've had for years and we've got um, Bambi was in there but we've just put George that's naughty George and Wesley and then we have the girls over there and it's now become a junk room very quickly so my beautiful new studio had nothing in it, <laughs> has now got the dog bed, uh, the old sofa, because the dogs use both sofas, and my camera's hanging on by elastic bands because I'm not using the right camera at the moment. <laughs> and then my gorgeous big big brick wall, which was going to house, which is plaster drying out, so I can't put anything in front of it. Uh, because of the spotlights, um, and I originally thought the spotlights were going to be in the middle of the roof here, but they've put them here so I can't put my big white cabinets um, so I know I have nowhere to hide my junk <laughs> even more junk so we have to do the pond obviously now because the garden's gonna look a mess um, so this was my beautiful new studio which has become a bunny run <laughs> so I've just managed to put some pencils and some color books um, onto my desk and we have the lappy laptop and I had the cushions for the bunny but she wouldn't sit on them <laughs> so that's where we are at the moment so today was basically just whoopsie a rubber band on the stand <laughs> to get going again oops we've just got a bit of a, a wobble on Oh, thank you. So, oops. Uh, so Bambi's having a run round. Oops. Goodness gracious, Bambi. She's uh, literally doing laps. <laughs> Never seen a run. Hello, darling. Are you going to come and say hi to everybody? So this is Bambi. I'm just going to move her very quickly. So let's have a quick bunny cam. Come on, Bambi. Boobies. Come on, Bambi. Boobies. Oh, she's gone. Bambi, come on then, come on then, no, come on, come on, come on Bams, Bambi, what's this, come on, she's beautiful, she is, the beautiful girl, we had a bunny cam earlier, Oopsie, I'm against the window at the moment, so I still haven't got enough room in my huge studio. I'm still cramped up against the, the chair, uh, against the window. Nope, she's disappeared. But we did have bu we did have Bambi on earlier, <laughs> so we'll do a, we'll do a Bambi a, a, a bunny cam when Samantha gets gets up. Um, so we've got the bunnies in the room, so it definitely is now bunnies designs. <laughs> uh, but my daughter, my youngest wants it to be a minimalist, uh, one sofa, one lamp, one table. Um, and I said, you can't really say art studio and minimalist in the same breath. Cause <laughs> and I've been collecting for over 50 years, so it's, I've got a lot of junk. 
and while we were having that cam we'll have a very quick cat cam that we had earlier um, this little girl was starving bless her but she's now put some weight on she's got a new home and she looks like the Felix cat she's uh, she's seven months old and she was extremely hungry but so pretty so pretty and I haven't quite sorted my lights out yet really really pretty girl really beautiful girl bless her so she has a new home in January and this little boy here has got the roundest eyes ever they are just pure round and his face is round and he's just a delight he's a gorgeous little boy he needs a forever home as well I put them on the website and then uh, Lennon um, this is Lennon he's he's eight but he's been playing like a kitten and he's beautiful as well so Lennon wants a home as well so there will be um, and he's just beautiful bless him he's just gorgeous so he might be coming to stay over Christmas we'll see but we do have coming in the next couple of days some feral kittens coming to play over Christmas so they'll be out every day for a play <coughs> excuse me I just seem to have a bunny moment she's been on the desk and she's molting so anybody got any questions it's a bit of a mixed mash today so apologies uh, for youtubers but sometimes my streams have got quite a lot of waffle on them <laughs> and the sooty the sooty attack is getting better um, the other little boy who looks like this, this isn't a photograph of him but he's the spit he's rather grumpy on a morning and um, he joined me in bed and snuggled up and I shouted goodbye to my daughter and woke him up and he just turned around and attacked me because he was he's a grumpy boy and we should know to be quiet on a morning so it's a bit of a madhouse and then um we also have uh, the Alfie, who is known as not the brightest bunny in the pack, um, had a bit of a moment. And my studio was looking quite nice as a, a quite nice place to sit <laughs> until I filled it with junk. We put more and more junk in it until eventually it was just junk. <laughs> and then we put the bunnies in it. But Alfie decided that he couldn't cope. One of the bunnies jumped up. Uh, this is the baby. She jumped on the window ledge and went, well, this is my space. And you see the plasters are just tacky because the plasterer walked out of the door at lunchtime and the electrician walked back in to finish. <laughs> so they, And she's so beautiful. I mean, just attitude. <laughs> um... And these were the babies that were the little tiny wrigglers that we, we put on mummy because she wouldn't. But she definitely decided that that was going to be her space. I mean, she legged it to the top, but she has the most beautiful markings. So I think I'm being inspired to do a bit more painting and drawing. And then we have the Alfie, who is um, not all there, as everybody probably knows. This is the Alfie. This is the Alfie. Lick it, biting a window. <laughs> this is the Alfie. It's the first time he's ever done that. But he's trying to bite the glass. <laughs> so Alfie's, Alfie's definitely not all there, bless him. As anybody knows, this is the Elf Master. So he will be coming in here eventually when we get the tables and the bunnies will be higher up. So have we got any questions? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Alvy's not all there, bless him. He can't help it. He just can't help it, bless him. He's, but he is not. <laughs> He's not as he should be, shall we say. He's adorable, but um, he had a bad start in life and it, it didn't do him any good. <laughs> 
I did, I'd never seen a dog try to bite a window. Never have I seen a dog try to bite a window. It's really funny. But I think it's a bad sign when they lick. He's never done it before. It's just purely because we were bit giving the bunnies all the attention and he really couldn't cope with that. He is spoiled rotten. I'm just looking for Bambi, but she's she's running around, literally lapping the room. <laughs> Um, and we had Bambi, Bambi out earlier, but George was being naughty to the other boy, as he does. So, um, so I love the graphic tint, but this is as a dry pencil. So my idea would be, and again, you can get the real dark grunge. So I thought that was really different. Um, so going back really quickly. So I will finish that off eventually, but I've had. Um, right, so we do that. Um, but to show the diff, oopsie, the difference is very quickly. That's graphy tint from Derwent. There's 24 in the set, and they're only about 20 odd pounds. They're not too bad. And this is ooh, goodness gracious me. And um, no, it's not that one. I missed, missed it. <coughs> oh, come on, silly sausage. Just have a look at that. Oh, it's next to the stars. There. So this is Graffy Tint by Derwent, scratching a bit of colour. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, as a watercolour pencil, and this is Graffy Tint as using it as a pencil. So I wanted you to see the difference. So because of this, and I bought the Joanna book last year. I thought I'd do a comparison. So I'm going to do this particular page again, slightly different, but using Joanna's, <coughs> excuse me, using Joanna's um, designs, tracing them, reversing them, and filling the page. Um, and then hopefully, You can see the colours are a little bit out, but they are kind of grungy. Um, <coughs> if I put the red next to it, you can see there's, there's a bit of grunge going on. Uh, but they're still quite nice and pale there, but I wanted to use them in the really, really strong colours. And I've made a little colour swatch. Now this is actually watercolour that I use. Um, now, my colour seems to be a little bit... I've been playing with the colour, so I've probably changed it maybe too much. But you can see with these that... Just have a look at Sooty, see how Sooty's going. <clears throat> so you can see that they're all kind of grungy, so there's just a greeny bit of green, a bit of blue, a bit of pink. Um, that's the port colour and then we've got a bit of a autumn brown which is the only other ready colour we've got um, some browns and some greys and some lovely greens and some cool blues and a couple of purples and that's it so you've really kind of got to use your colours kind of really interesting but I quite like the fact that you can use them as a watercolour and also as a pure pencil <clears throat> But I do like this because as a watercolour, you have one pencil, but you have at least 10 shades. So even though there's only 24 in the set, it's going to give you 240 colours or shades or tones, depending on how you want. And then, of course, you could also put a little bit of that blue with that green and grunge that up. And a bit so you can mix them together a little bit to grunge them round. Sorry, I have a huge rabbit running round at 300 miles an hour. Um, so you've got even though there's only 24 pencils, technically you've got hundreds of colors. Um, so you can always scratch a bit of color and do it differently. 
um, and I'll do that probably next year um, when I take these pencils to a whole new different dimension uh, when I'm doing them in my uh, my colour book. So this is quite interesting to do. So thank you for watching. Bump, bump it, Bambi's out. Oh, she. So thanks for watching. <laughs>